This is Lisa from Mobile Tech Review, and today we're going to do a smackdown between two Ultrabooks that have been on the market a couple of months. I know usually we do them when they're really brand new and fresh, but sometimes we have to send them back pretty quickly after we review them because they're just review loaner units. But once in a while we get to keep them around for a while and compare them a couple of months in. Right here we have the Lenovo ThinkPad Yoga, and here we have the Dell XPS 12, both Windows 8.1 convertible tablet, laptop, you name it, all combined in one, both Ultrabooks. A lot of similarities to big business brands. We're going to look at them now. So here it is, two competing Windows 8.1 convertible Ultrabook laptops, whatever you want to call them. 12.5 inches on both of these. In fact, they've been using the same display manufacturer for both of these, which just tells you how many similarities there are going on here. Intel, fourth generation Haswell Ultrabook, 15 watt CPUs inside. That's standard Ultrabook CPUs with Intel HD 4400 graphics. So you're looking at the same horsepower inside. Honestly, between Ultrabooks that are all running on the same selection of CPUs, you're not going to see significant performance differences between them. You can get either of these with 4 or 8 gigs of DDR3 RAM, and that RAM is soldered on board, so that means you can't upgrade it afterwards. Get the RAM that you want with either of these, and because you can't do anything about it after the fact. Let's put it that way. Now, when it comes to storage possibilities, they diverge a little bit. The Dell has SSD drive options only uses an M SATA drive. Those are pretty common, well, you know, among geeky internal laptop parts these days. You can find them on Newegg and other places if you want to actually upgrade the SSD drive on here. You, standard's 128 gig. When the Lenovo ThinkPad Yoga came out, it was a 128 gig SSD as well. Of course, with either of these, you can get higher storage capacities if you want with solid state storage. But since we reviewed it back in December of last year, they've actually added some model options on, and you can actually get this with the spinning 500 gig hard drive if you want with a small caching drive. So, for those of you who need a lot of storage on the go, that's something to keep in mind. The drawback with convertibles, particularly because not only are they small, relatively light, but you, you flip them around, you use them in different positions, you can use these as a tablet. Uh, you, spinning hard drives, you, you know, there's a chance you could crash the heads. They're pretty good at auto-parking their heads now if, if you're going to go ahead and do something like that, but... You know, if you're doing this all day long, I would prefer to have an SSD drive unless you can't live without extra storage. Anyway, Lenovo does give you the option of having the added storage in there, and it has an M2 slot for SSD drive, so a little bit more versatility inside. You can use a 2.5-inch hard drive, a 2.5-inch SSD drive, and there's an M2 slot for SSDs as well. Given the similarity of the internals, both of these are 128 gig, 4 gig of RAM, Core i5-4200U machines, they score very similarly on synthetic benchmarks, so nothing to talk about there. Again, the same integrated graphics as standard with Ultrabooks. What is significant is the different ways that they actually transform. The Dell, as you see, so the Dell XPS 12 can work as a tablet. Now, both of these guys weigh around 3.3 to 3.5 pounds. The Dell XPS is 3.35 pounds. The Yoga is 3.45 pounds, so pretty close. So either of these is going to be kind of heavy as a tablet. The Dell feels nice because it has this grippy carbon fiber back here and no exposed keys, so it works as a tablet like so. And this is a touch-only display. That's also another important thing. If you want to use it as a laptop, all you have to do is pick it up. Notice how it's just backwards. This is an easel hinge. You do this. So that's how they get around the, the yoga problem of having the keys exposed. We'll look at how the yoga works in a minute. So there you have a little versatility. This is as far back as the screen goes. For those of you who want to lay it flat on the table to share a presentation or something like that, not so much. Now, if you, if you want to do the presentation thing, you can leave the display out like that. So you can still deliver presentations like that. Tent mode, not so much. The edges are not really designed for standing like that. You can. It's, it's okay. Not too, too bad, but not its primary purpose in life. But you can get away with it. The ThinkPad Yoga can work as a laptop. Obviously, we have it like that. The hinge is a 360-degree hinge. There's two hinges right here. Very beefy. So any angle that you want, all the way to flat. And if you want to use it in presentation mode. You just keep going and you lay it with the keys on the table like so. Don't worry, on all yogas the keys are deactivated and the ThinkPad Yoga has an extra trick. It has the lock and load keyboard. So the bezel actually raises up around it and the keys are locked so they don't move. The trackpad moves but it doesn't activate any input so you don't have to worry about accidentally doing anything to the device. However, yes, it is a little bit weird and if you tend to work on 
grimy conference room tables, whatever, you might want to keep in mind the fact that Lenovo sells a sleeve that's about $30 you can put over the bottom section just to keep it clean. Or you can go with the Dell and avoid the problem altogether, of course. So put it down like that, and if you want to use it in tent mode, Lenovo does intend that. They've got a little rubber on the edges, makes it pretty sturdy. You can do that, and if you want to use it as a tablet, Again, the keys are here, they're locked, so they're not going to move, unlike other yogas, the ThinkPad Yoga's special trick is the lift and lock keyboard, but you still, you know, you feel them there. So if that bugs you, the Dell is for you. Another important difference is the Lenovo ThinkPad Yoga is available with an active digitizer. That means not just 10 points of multi-touch, but this pen that lives in the silo. It, both versions are available, so make sure you get the one with the pen if you want the pen. If it doesn't ship with the pen, it means it doesn't have the required hardware inside to work with a pen. For those of you who are love OneNote, who need to mark things up, your graphic artists, you know who you are. If you want the pen option, Lenovo, yes. Dell, no, there's no option for that whatsoever. The pen-enabled display is full HD, 1920 by 1080. Uh, when we first reviewed that, this is, that was the only resolution. Now there is a 1366 by 768 option touch only for the lowest end of this. If you get the one with the pen, it is a matte display. Notice there's like no glare here. It's pretty darn sweet. It's very nice. Makes everything a little easier to see. If you get the touch only model, even if it's full HD, it has a slight anti-glare finish on it, but not nearly as pronounced as this. There, there is more glare. Not quite as bad as Surface Pro 2, but there will be more. Now our XPS 12 is available. Again, full HD is your only option. It is a glossy display, touch only, no pen. So you can see the difference in the ref reflectivity there. So if you're one of those people that likes a matte display, keep that in mind. Now, some people actually like gloss displays. Those of you who consume lots of multimedia, for example, because it tends to make contrast more obvious. So you might actually like the Dell better. Now, both of these typically use LG panels, 12.5 inch. With the Dell XPS 12, more so than the Lenovo ThinkPad Yoga, there's been some talk about temporary image retention. And that means if you've been looking at a page, say you leave it on the same screen for five, 10 minutes or so, particularly high contrast pages, like a white web page with black text, you might see a temporary, that is it goes away after 10 seconds, 20 seconds or so, uh, temporary ghosting of the image of what you're looking at. It seems to hit the XPS 12 a little bit harder. Some yoga people have complained. Dell is now actually ret doing repairs on them if it really, really bothers if you have one that has severe image retention. In terms of color gamut, again, because they're typically using the same panels, they're the same. They're not class leaders, either of them, but they're not bad. About 72% of sRGB and around 52% of Adobe RGB. So graphic artists who are doing professional image editing, say for publication, who need superior color accuracy might find neither of these is up to the job. But it's a funny thing, the same thing with Surface Pro 2. It has the same color gamut. That's just where they're falling right now. Now, for everyday consumption, both of these are very bright displays. They're very colorful displays and the color accuracy is not bad. And you can cal calibrate either of these if you need to do that. So actually they are very nice displays, IPS, good wide viewing angles. And both of these have 400 nits of brightness. Now, our Dell measured about 340. Dell claims 400 is variance between one panel and the next. And our Lenovo measured in at 390 nits of brightness. So how about keyboards and trackpads? Both the Dell XPS line and ThinkPads in general have the best keyboards you can find on laptops. I love both of them. And obviously, I spend a lot of time writing reviews. Both of these are backlit keyboards. They both have shaped keys, a little bit concave, so they sculpt down a little bit so your fingers can feel when you're really on the center of the key. A little shape to the keys. Honestly, either of them is a great keyboard. And the key travel on these is pretty similar. You know, these are very thin machines, so you're not going to get huge deep key travel like you would on a larger machine. But for a thin machine, they're both very good. They both have damped keys, so none of that clicky kind of rattly thing going on. It just feels nice when you type. So really close race there. Both of these use Synaptics trackpads. Now, the ThinkPad, you get the pointing stick. So those of you who are used to that, your ThinkPad aficionados, your, something to keep in mind. For those of you who like the eraser stick pointer, both of these have buttonless trackpads. I know that, again, bothers some ThinkPad diehards there who are used to having discrete buttons, particularly when you're using it with this. But overall, it is a very good, very responsive trackpad there. I might give the teeniest edge still to the ThinkPad keyboard for tactile feel, but honestly, it's a pretty darn close race there. Now, in terms of ports, more is the same than is different on these.
Both of these have two USB 3.0 ports. Lenovo does not bother color coding them because they both are USB 3.0. They also have a docking port here, the one link dock port, which is pretty darn nice desktop dock that adds Ethernet, more USB, full size HDMI. Combo audio mic in stereo out headphone jack. Here we have volume and power controls on the side and rotation lock since you might be using this in tablet mode. Full size SD card slot, your other USB port and a mini HDMI, and then there's your lock slot right there. On our Dell, here's our rotation lock, there's our combo headphone jack, power, volume controls right there, lock slot, speaker grill right there. By the way, good placement there. No matter what position you're using this in, the audio is pretty good. With the, the ThinkPad, you really want to use it in laptop mode to get the best audio sound out of the stereo speakers there. And there's our uh, other speaker. This is the little button that tells you how your battery is doing. And ours, obviously, since I plugged it into power, needs some charging at the moment. Two USB 3.0 ports right here and mini display port. Now, there's the difference. So with Lenovo, we have HDMI, which is really popular with consum consumer products. And the benefit of, of this mini display port is that it drives larger than full HD resolution external monitors. So those of you who use big external monitors that are very high resolution might appreciate that. With the ThinkPad, you, if you get pick up the one link dock that's around 120 or 150 bucks or so, that'll give you the port that you need. But otherwise, mm, there it is. So you know who you are. Do you find HDMI more useful or do you find mini display port? That's about the only difference here in terms of ports. In terms of looks, beauty is in the eye of the beholder. People who love the, the Spartan ThinkPad look will, well, obviously like the ThinkPad Yoga. Dell XPS, I think it's pretty cool. I like carbon fiber. You know that. I've said that before. It's interesting. It's nice. It's tactile. It's grippy. It's different from other products on the market. You can't say that they've copied anybody with this look. So... Again, beauty's in the eye of the beholder there. In terms of ruggedness, Dell machines are usually pretty rugged, and even this easel hinge, which, you know, it's a small point of contact where that display rotates, so far have never had any problems, and there aren't a lot of problems on forums, people complaining about this breaking. So even though it looks like a, a possible delicate thing, it's not so bad. However, the ThinkPad, they're all about ruggedness and mill spec and all that kind of thing. So this guy is its typical you know, magnesium and metal. It is extremely durable. So if you need something that you're going to be using in the field in kind of rough and tumble settings, ThinkPad would be a better choice. In terms of size and weight, you're obviously looking at just about the same thing. How about customer support? Now we're in the U.S., so we're going to talk about the U.S. I would put them at about equal footing for customer support and service. They both offer extended warranties, business warranties, on-site warranties, depending on what your company or you as an individual sign up for. So generally speaking, both of them do better than average when it comes to customer service. For pricing, they are also priced quite similarly. Both of these have entry-level models with Core i3s, and they're around 900 bucks or so for the entry-level model. That gets you the Core i3 1366 by 768 non-pen digitizer on your ThinkPad and a 500 gig hard drive, whereas with the Dell XPS, you do get a small SSD in there, and you get a Core i3. And once you get up to the Core i5, the full HD display, again, you're looking at about the same price. Several months ago for the holiday season, uh, December of 2013, Dell had some crazy sales going on the XPS 12, but those have pretty much disappeared. So you're looking at about, um, depends on how sales are going for either of these, around $1,100 for the Core i5 with the full HD display. So how about battery life? Both of these, by the way, are not too hard to open up. There's no release lever to take out the battery and swap them. Typical of Ultrabooks, there isn't such a thing, but they're held together with Phillips head screws. Not too hard to take the bottom off if you do need to yank that battery out. Or again, like I said, access your SSD or hard drive, that sort of thing. The wireless cards in here. Lenovo, it's okay battery life. It's decent battery life. I'm averaging about six and a half hours on a charge with this with moderate use and brightness set to 50%. The Dell XPS 12, well, that one is the Energizer Bunny as Windows machines go. Yes, I know the MacBook Air can go even longer, but as Windows machines go, this guy lasts about eight hours on a charge. Same moderate use, same 50% brightness. So definitely a battery life advantage there. Now with the Lenovo, you could probably get up to seven hours if, you, if you're a little more conservative with your energy management settings, but then of course the XPS, you could push a little bit more. But I find that with the XPS, Pushing the power settings and all that kind of thing to be more frugal really don't extend the battery life that much more. With Lenovo, there's a little bit more wiggle room with that. This bottom here, again, it's removable. This one is held in place with Torx T5 screws and 
just like with the ThinkPad, you can get the battery, you can get to the M SATA SSD drive and the socketed wireless card. Both of these particular machines have Intel Wi Fi 7260 AC, that's dual band Wi Fi 80211 AC, also BG and N are supported. Uh, most ThinkPads that I've seen shipping have that card in it. However, the base model it still has the N adapter, and so it's up to you what you want. But like I said, for the most part, you're looking at that Intel adapter, which is about the, the best that you can get right now in terms of a wireless adapter inside of a laptop. Both of those are coupled with Bluetooth 4.0. So who are these machines for? Well, obviously anybody who's looking for a convertible Ultrabook for starters that's good quality, pretty durable from a well-known brand. Both of these big time business brands, uh, but I'm talking about consumers right now. I could see consumers going for either of these just as well. Both of them have the same this nice high display resolution, very good keyboards, that sort of thing. I would say that the ThinkPad Yoga is definitely going to be the choice if you're a graphic artist, if you're somebody who does drawing with the pen, obviously, because you can't do that all with the XPS 12. So if you're thinking about that, it's the yoga for you, not the Dell XPS 12. When it comes to business travelers who just want something super duper rugged, much as this is pretty darn strong and carbon fiber is nifty and all that kind of thing, I would say that the yoga probably could take more abuse even without showing any scarring and, and the, the hinge design is certainly rugged, although it leaves the keyboard facing out, which leads to the other thing. Some people, even though the yoga has been one of the most popular selling Windows 8 convertibles, Lenovo is doing quite well compared to other laptop manufacturers, some people just really detest having this keyboard on the outside, even with the lock and load that locks the keys so they don't wiggle. So if you think that's the stupidest thing you've ever seen, and I know from the YouTube comments, some of you say so every time, well, I think it's the Dell XPS 12 for you because it keeps that keyboard nicely tucked inside. Again, in terms of horsepower and performance, you're looking at the same options with both of these with the exception of the Dell XPS 12 not offering a spinning hard drive for those of you who need high capacity hard drives inside. I think most people these days would love to have an SSD if they could, so I'm not sure how important that is, but you know if it's important to you. Now, when it's a really close race like this, I know you guys always like to know which one I would pick, and darn it, this is really, 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 really hard, you know? I mean, the Dell XPS 12, especially when it was on super crazy sale for the last holiday season, that one was hard to pass up. Me, personally, I do like to use the pen. I like it for OneNote, and I do like to draw. So for me, it would be the ThinkPad Yoga for that reason. If the pen were not important, really, it is a matter of which design you like better, whether you want a matte display, and gee, that's about it. So that's our Lenovo ThinkPad Yoga versus Dell XPS 12 comparison smackdown. And you know what? It's really hard to pick a winner in this case. And often that happens. Nowadays, there's a lot of very strong products on the market. There's no clear winner there. But obviously, if you need the digital pen, it's going to be the Lenovo ThinkPad for you. If you like the kind of expandable internals in here, the regular 2.5 inch hard drive bay, for example, this one's going to be a winner. But if you hate the idea of the keyboard being on the back, well, the Dell XPS 12 is going to be your choice. I'm Lisa from Mobile Tech Review. Be sure to watch our video reviews of each of these products, read our full written reviews on mobiletechreview.com, and subscribe to our YouTube channel.